Well, here's another one for you. It is a nine-letter word beginning with a C and ending with a D with a pair of S's in the middle. And this is its 100th birthday. It's the crossword puzzle, of course, now an obsession for millions. It first started addicting word fans a century ago today. Here's Mo Rocca. It's estimated that 50 million Americans tackle the acrosses and downs of crossword puzzles every week, filling in those little boxes to great satisfaction or frustration. My mother sometimes calls me to ask for help on the Washington Post crossword puzzle. Uh-huh. Good. And? I, I try to be helpful. Yeah, yeah. And what's your specialty? What are you good at? Sports, geography? I'm movies. great at geography. Yeah, Capitals. Yeah. Me too, okay. Baku is the capital of, of uh, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Yeah, yeah. Will Shorts is the crossword puzzle editor for the New York Times, considered the gold standard for crossword puzzles. What do you look for in a puzzle? First of all, I look for a theme. Something that's fresh, interesting, hasn't been done before, something that's going to maybe have a little humor to it. The Times puzzle appears every day. It goes from relatively easy on Monday to positively evil on Saturday. The famous Sunday puzzle is the largest of the week, filled with puns, tricks, and tantalizing clues. When I found out the crossword puzzle was turning 100, I thought, really? I thought it was maybe a lot older than that. Most people think it goes back to ancient times, but the first one appeared in 1913 in an old newspaper, The New York World. That puzzle was called a word cross. It was dreamt up by Arthur Wynne, who at the time was editor of the New York World's fun section. Did they catch on right away? It took until 1924 for the craze to happen. Simon & Schuster came out with the world's first crossword book in 1924. It was their first book. The first printing sold out in a matter of weeks. Crosswords launched Simon & Schuster. That's true. A division of CBS. Yeah. <laughs> well put. There have even been movies about crossword puzzles. The 2006 film Wordplay showcased all kinds of solvers, from athletes to presidents. Come on, shorts! Bring it! To comedians. The Times puzzle is, is, is the one for me. The crossword puzzle has been very good to certain public figures. Yeah. Um, anybody with a short, vowel-heavy name is going to appear in crosswords. Uh, Eno, E-N-O, Brian Eno, he is an important person in music, but uh, his name lives on largely through crosswords, I think. Actress director Ida Lupino. Uma Thurman in crosswords all the time. You know, you can almost tell the trajectory of a celebrity's career by their appearance in crosswords. So take Ito, I-T-O. In the old days, the clue for that was always Japanese statesman because there was a, a premiere in Japan back in the 19th century. And, uh, and then when Lance Ito was judged for the uh, O.J. Simpson case in the 90s, his name started appearing in crosswords, and now we're on to Midori Ito. The skater. The skater. The, she's the real Ito now. She is. Or she's the crosswordy Ito. If only Lance Ito had been able to do a quadruple axel. <laughs> <laughs> of course, puzzles have gone digital and can be played electronically these days. Daily Celebrity Crossword allows users to check in with friends on Facebook as they solve. I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten every day from non-enthusiasts who said, finally, wow, this is a crossword puzzle that I can solve. There's something in our brains that responds to filling in these little boxes. Finishing a puzzle is very satisfying to us. How did it go? Dan Fayer is the four-time champion of the American Crossword Puzzle Tournament. Right now, Fayer is the fastest and best crossword solver in the country. What is crammed inside of your brain because of crossword puzzles? I know so many three, four, and five-letter words. How has this affected your home life? I don't think that solving crosswords has taken time away from the real important things in life. It has just taken time away like from... Sudoku. <laughs> I know. Don't get me started. <laughs> For CBS This Morning, this is Mo Rocca. Joining us now, Merle Regal, master crossword constructor. He's created over 5,000 crossword puzzles and the author of Merle Regal's 100th anniversary crossword book. Merle, good morning. Good morning. When that first puzzle came out in 1913, uh, it was a big success with fans, but the New York Times, which now runs a lot of crossword puzzles, labeled it then a complete waste of time. Tell us about that first puzzle. That's right. The first puzzle was an immediate success with readers, just not with people on the staff of the New York world where, where it appeared. 
for some reason, the, the back shop hated doing the diagrams because it was all done by hand. And the New York Times wrote numerous editorials about this was a waste of time. We hope they go away soon. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. You know, it took them 25 years before they finally came around to running their own right. at 42. But. Right. I am addicted to crosswords. I do them all the time. But I, how do you even construct them? Do you come up? I mean, I'm assuming there's a theme, but yes. then how do you build them? Because there's rules. Yes, there's a, there are lots of rules. If you turn a diagram upside down, the arrangement of black squares stays the same. Right. Even most uh, crossword addicts have never realized that. And it's mainly to show that if, if uh, so it looks like a, a real pattern, like something on your bathroom floor would be, as opposed to just black squares thrown anywhere. Uh, but it also means that the theme answers have to match, too. So if you have, like... See, David Letterman can do his top ten list. If I did it, my first gag would have to be the same length as my tenth gag, and the right. second like that, so back and forth. So if I do, like, uh, oh, like, uh, movies that shouldn't be shown together, Driving Miss Daisy Nuts, for example, <laughs> I would have to have another one that's exactly the same length. Right. You know? uh, so th that's it's just a strange thing about puzzles. They, they look better. They sort of separate the, uh, like the people who are just starting out from the people who have been doing it for You've a been while. doing this since you were six years old. Six years old, yes. What got you started making puzzles? Oh, I was into those uh, builder sets, you know, like uh, Lincoln Logs and, and uh, Tinker Toys, and when I found out what words were, I just built structures out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, someone gave me grid paper. I still don't know who this person was. Um, um, but uh, I wished I'd picked up an electric guitar, to be frankly honest. <laughs> but, it was a, but it was a crossword puzzle, so this is what I... And it just was endlessly fascinating to me that you can hook words together like this. I'm just amazed that you can do it. I mean, you're very successful, syndicated in over 50 papers. Yes. Do you get people who actually write to you? Because I have been so frustrated <laughs> by a crossword puzzle that I'm like, I just want to turn to Google. I mean, do you have people who say to you, that clue is just too hard? Uh, well, not that it was too hard, but we do like that buffer between, you know, between the author and the... The audience. I had a lady write the other day, she'd never heard of Plan 9 from Outer Space. I said, this is the most famous bad movie ever made. I don't know how to explain to you that this is, like, legitimate for a puzzle. Well, are there rivalries between crossword puzzle creators? Uh, no, I don't think so. We're a pretty friendly bunch. When we get together at the tournament every year, no one is like, you know, going to do this. Uh, we mostly say, I love that puzzle you did about blah, blah, blah. And the, and the, but you we, don't do other people's puzzles. I I solve other people's puzzles, but I like to do just the hard ones, because if I find one that's funny, I'm just jealous. Well, just, I love your puzzles. Me. I love your ties. Thank Earl you. Regal, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome.